start the recording. Welcome to the Asia Pacific meeting here on March 23rd, 2022. Um, if you can or you want to, you can write your name in the attendee list. And the agenda that we have laid out right now, and we're open to other items, are talking about translations and Google Summer of Code. Uh, I think with translations, I know that we've been putting uh, new metrics into the translations repo, and I think that we just wanted to check in on that. Yeah, uh, I I just checked this morning, so most of, of the pull request has been merged, and there is only one left uh, metrics. Uh, I think it it will be done tomorrow. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So translations. Uh, for the ones already in the issue tracker of the translations repo, I'm gonna. I'm going to put that, that hedge in there in case there's somebody who has not put something in the translations repo. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then for, for Google Summer of Code, I, I think we probably just want to discuss if there are Chinese students who want to apply to some of the projects that we've outlined and if, if there's a way to promote that. Yeah, I, I some I noticed that someone has uh, put some comments on that uh, on one uh, Google Summer Code topic about conversion rate. So here I, I I'm wondering, and they mentioned some micro task before it's launched. So uh, what kind of micro task should should we provide? Should we provide? I I'm oh, not sure. yeah, Matt mentioned that to me. Um... I think Friday, that there weren't micro tasks. And I confess I haven't looked at it because I th swear I put my micro, micro tasks in there, but I also remembered um, that actually, uh, participant request live trans, oh yes, enable, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Community. So micro tasks for that one. Micro tasks for that one. Micro tasks. Uh huh. Here. Okay. Wait so. A <clears throat> It's kind of like preparations before start doing that. But, uh... Yeah, I guess this is not a good micro task list, is it? I created the link. Um... So I can take it to do to put, I'll take it to do to put some micro tasks on there. Okay. I, I think, I think they can be very similar um, to, to the micro, I think the micro tasks can be very similar to the ones that we use okay, um, great. In, in other projects. So. Uh, uh, when we are GSOC ready to start, July or July? Oh. Um, the start in the, the, I think it's June. June. I, okay. I would have to double check. It might be the end of May. Uh huh. So, but I think it's June. I should I should know this, but. Of so, <clears> course, <throat> I noticed a lot lot of uh, students from uh, all over the world have shown their interest on on. on in chaos community, uh, including the Augur and the Chaos uh, Grim Lab. So 
I, I'm not sure how to provide some support on on, on, on the task like here. So yeah. So if you if you want me to any support, I I can do uh, uh, as best as I can. Yeah. Yes, me too. I mean, I think so. The micro tasks are not in, intended. I, I at least I, I never really intend them to be, you know, a giant amount of time. I, I think. I think that I intend them to be enough effort to show effectively to demonstrate interest in the project. And the parent, I don't know. I don't know why that ended up like that. Um, that is weird. <clears throat> I guess the, I guess indenting was interpreted wrong. But essentially, like, just do something with Grimoire uh -huh. or Augur is really... I see that. ...the intent. I mean, I think those are good, especially for this one, since we're uh -huh. building a metrics model. Uh -huh. The metrics model, in my opinion, could be built with either tool. And mm -hmm. in fact, when we look at SIGIL, SIGILS, in the Grimoire Lab, we, we may discover that <laughs> the metrics models already built by them. There's something like 70 um, of those. All right, that looks better. Uh huh. So um, I understand. Yeah. So I, I think for that one, it's it's really just getting either tool kind of working in any any kind of a demo, and then completing the application process. Um, and the application process is outlined. Jeez, I okay. Just, it's, so it's, it's, outlined like... at, it's outlined at Google Summer of Code, but it's also, and we have a link um, here, I think, opens. Yeah, that, that link will take you to, to where you need to go. Um, my okay now my for some reason now my mouse does not want to access this document oh, there we go And then this one is just, this is a list of chaos projects. Projects and what was the micro, which one was the micro tasks for you? Uh, conversion rate. Thank you. Right. And do, do, do we have a, a some limit of uh do we have do we have limit number of uh, tasks i i i so the intention in my approach and and i can i can't speak for everyone but it is that you complete you know a micro task of, of you know so you can like the first one's usually the place to start <clears throat> and like in the case of conversion rate, I think if you get either Augur or Grimoire Lab running, that's a pretty sufficient micro task to demonst essentially demonstrate a, sort of a, a what, what would we call it, an interest, a, a commitment to working on that project, to, to getting through troubles, obviously. Um, and, and so the other micro tasks for conversion rate would be, I think, things that you could do in addition, but I think just, you know, showing that you've gotten either platform installed is is enough for us to know that, you know, you have the skills and 
tenacity to do the work. Okay. Yeah, we're not, we don't, I, and I don't think we try to make the micro tasks particularly overwhelming. We recognize applicants have a limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. okay. So we communicate uh, through the pull request and issue comments and also through the Slack mm -hmm. channel, right? Do we have right. any specific uh, GSOC Slack channel? Already? Yes, we do. There is a Google Summer of Code Slack channel. And I have to, have to I should check and see if um, it should be listed here. I wonder, uh, you know, I should just put the Slack link right there hi sean uh, yeah. i had a doubt in uh, making the repository you know i've completed the first micro task i think i've completed it and so how to you know uh, generate a pull request and make a repository on the first task is you know install the object what repository should i um so that would be helpful to people are finding the Slack channel, but that should help. Um, so if you've just if you've done an install um, to show that you've if if that's the micro task you've completed, I think you could demonstrate that by posting a screenshot of the running system you have locally into the into the comment and you can also then um, add your name here by you know doing a pull request for this page and when you're finished with it you can submit the proposal template uh, a link to your proposal here <clears throat> and once you've submitted it to the Google Summer of Code you can indicate that here so the, the micro task, uh, in terms of a, a link to the micro task repository, if you're doing the first micro task of installing either platform, then what I would do is make that a link to your fork um, and make a comment on the issue associated with that project that has the screenshot. That's, that's what I would recommend. Okay, understood. I think it's and I, and I I mean pull requests are are good as well. I, I my experience though is that Grimoire Lab and Augur are both complex enough that doing a I mean you there are certainly small meaningful pull requests that you could do, but I think the learning curve to get to that point is part of what you go through during the Google Summer of Code. I don't know. What, what do you think, Don? Does that, that sound reasonable or on mark to you? Or are we, do you think we're looking for more? I mean, I'll be honest, I, I really haven't worked with the Google yeah. Summer of Code students. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have a yeah. good you know, for yeah. what's well and what's not. Yeah, I mean, it, usually the, the pull requests that we get from Google Summer of Code students, you can fix like very, we get fixes for like documentation issues or or other kinds of small things that can be fixed without creating a, a very, you know, so the expectation if you did a pull request wouldn't be a very large pull request, it would be something minor. And I think it's, from my perspective, it, it is more important to just show that you can get either piece of software running because that's, I think, a significant effort in each case, obviously we all try to make it less of a significant effort, but I don't, I don't think that's the case yet. Uh, because in 
in Grim Lab, they have multiple modules if you want to run it as, as a whole, whole uh, as an integration solution. So I suggest uh, uh, we can ask uh, our students to set up their own organizations in the GitHub and uh, to fork those in uh, needed um, Grim Lab modules into their own uh, yeah. Uh, organizations and then yeah. they can say the whole solutions. That's, that sounds good to me. I think, may, you know, using one of the Grimoire Lab pieces, Grimoire Lab has really good documentation. Um, and I think it's linked in some of the micro tasks. And, and so that might be the place to, to look is in the Grimoire Lab documentation, but there are a number of pieces to the stack and i think the the grimoire lab documentation um, leads you through a very nice um hello world kind of a process um i think i have this linked but let me just put it in. Um, I can't spell components this morning. It's it's really good. Doc. It's a really good tutorial. Um, so that's a probably a good place to start. Yeah, and, good documentation. On the other hand, I mean, it's really a tough one to you know crack. Yeah, I think I think this tutorial from Grimoire, Grimoire Lab is actually one of the better pieces of documentation I've read in open source. Most. Most open source documentation reads like disarming a bomb. Cut the red wire, but first cut the blue wire. <laughs> you know, that and so I think I, I've always relied on a lot of my own context and ability and experience and ability to decode things to interpret documentation and recognize the steps that aren't spelled out sometimes. So and I think I think that's pretty common in open source, to be honest. And this this is a, a very nice exception to that general thing. So going f are there? I know that we've uh, so started working on and talking about different metrics models, including conversion rate. And I, I believe I saw there was another one that the uh, evolution group started looking at the other day that opened up some questions about um, about what to do. And if I can just um, <clears throat> let's see. So I'm trying to remember the, the question. Oh, wait a minute. I don't need that. I need, I just need the link to, wow. Where's the link to the spreadsheet? <laughs> oh, I, we don't have the link oh, to the spreadsheet. Yeah, we have thread here. Is there a link to the spreadsheet here? I, I can send you one, I think. Yeah, or I can get it from a different, different meeting. Um, like from the chaos meeting yesterday. I just send it through the uh, through the chatty the window. The chatty window. Yep. <clears throat> um, I I didn't see it in the chatty window. Did you? Oh, send sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. I sent to right. June. I sent to June. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that before too, where I, I send a private message to somebody, and then what happened? So we we were looking at 
the let's see here in evolution and we were looking at code complexity um, and <clears throat> I thought somewhere in here we put a context link but it looks like it so if we go to metrics models code complexity I think it's this document here no apparently uh, the 70, 73 lines I think it's conversion rate no I was, like, I was talking about code complexity okay sorry um, and there was a Oh, I may, I may have put this in the wrong place. <clears throat> so we were looking at this and trying to discern what we would need to calculate code complexity. And most of the metrics in chaos rely on a dynamic, the, 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 the metrics are dynamic. In other words, they're always changing. There's always new issues, new comments, new pull requests, new commits. It's, a, it's sort of tracking an evolutionary process in, I think, the case of nearly every metric with the possible exceptions maybe of elephant factor and bus factor, although even those can move significantly and quickly over time. When we thought about code complexity, we identified the things that we would need to calculate to, to to arrive at some measure of code complexity and and those things include for example language in a project lines of code in a project number of files in a project individual complexity of the files measured using something like um, a code counter that's derived from kokomo <clears throat> kokomo which is a classic software complexity algorithm, um, blank lines, comment lines, and total lines. And the, although these do change over time, they change very slowly. And code complexity then is therefore more, it's a metric model that relies on what I would call slow changing metrics or metrics that might not look very different a year from now than they do today, which is in contrast to most of our metrics. And so there was some discussion in the evolution group about whether or not these are metrics or these should be something else um, if, because they look different than other metrics and there was some concern that they might confuse people. And I, from my, from, but I see things through the long chaos lens and software engineering work and to me, these are just basically slow moving static metrics that's what's different but they're still <clears throat> they're still metrics and maybe we could distinguish them as slower moving or nearly static but other than that they're the same but there was some concern that there were, others had some concern that they would read so differently that people could come to these metrics and be confused about what a chaos metric is yeah and i don't i'm curious actually, what others think actually i have a, a similar concern that uh, you, you know in the chaos we set up we uh, create metrics to measuring uh, the uh, the situation of the the whole project or community if we uh, deep dive into the code quality because the so-called complexity for me it's it's a one term for the code quality it, and yeah. it's make me think of the circle complexity of the mm -hmm. code yeah and, uh, not just this uh lots of code uh, surrounding this uh you know the, the matrix so i'm not sure if um, it, that's it that's it uh re reflect some uh, for me lots of code is a is a is a metric to to reflect the, the workload uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of a project, but uh, it doesn't uh, uh, to reflect the the quality of the code. I mean, right. you know, for the different person, they writing the same function, 
you know, based on their uh, their the experiences about this uh, project, they may, you know, for the same function, the last code should be different. You know, some right. experience some experience the developer could just use, uh, you know, a hundred lines of code to to complete it, but the other guys maybe a thousand, a thousand. <laughs> So it's it's kind of hard to to marry through this lens of code matrix, especially to reflect these complexity terms. Uh, what what metrics do you think we we would we want, we ought to include? Uh, for for me, uh, if I if I uh, more care about the quality of the code, I think. I think we, we we do need to care about code quality, but uh, uh, lots of code is just a small part of things. Uh, I I would more care about it, that this community have have uh, the review code review process, that this community has a CI, uh, you know CI running process. And would you would you like would you consider the the sort of execution of CI as part of the process? to be an indication of code complexity? Uh, not code complexity. I, I prefer call it code quality <laughs> mm -hmm. because I'm I'm I more prefer to using the proxy metrics to marry the code quality in the whole things instead of just using complexity. You know com complexity per se it's kind of hard to, to explain uh, in the common way, I mean, you know, for the different programming language, they have different way to, to marry that. And uh, even for the same thing, for example, I just mentioned uh, the, the circle complexity for the different program language, uh, even for the different project, um, they have different, mm. uh, uh, you know, the requirement about it. Yeah. It's kind of hard to do the comparison between two communities. So. If we do not, we cannot compare. How do we know that our code complexity or quality is good or not? Right. That's my concern. So I I, I more prefer using some proxy uh, proxy uh, metrics to reflect the code uh, quality. Okay. Uh, maybe in the next uh, next metrics model meeting we can discuss. It's a little bit. I can show in uh, the matrix model uh, we are uh, uh, we designed and and trying out in in our community to show the code quality. Uh, you know, uh, to to reflect the the code quality instead of the length of code we more care about contributor count as you know that uh, the contribute more contributor means uh, I more eyeballings to notice that the, uh, the, the, the possible box potential box and also mm -hmm. if there are more download uh, 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 frequency happened in your project which means um, the users or users of this product more uh, uh, agree, uh, you know, uh, uh, like your solutions. That's mm -hmm. also need another way to prove that your quality is good. Otherwise, I mean, not so much people would like to download your solution and to try to use that. Okay, um, that that sort of weighs in on that, and I'll bring that back to the community meeting. And obviously, I, I think we'll discuss it in the metrics uh, models meeting next week as well. And also, I noticed that because I, you know, before because of time differences, it's, it's kind of hard for me to attend this community meeting. But uh, every time I I look at it, uh, I, I I'm watching the records. It's really good so next time i will try to to, to attend it 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, I mean, I, yeah, I, the, the time difference is certainly very difficult. We, we, we are doing the best we can to accommodate time zones on that mod, metrics model meeting. Dawn is the one I think in the worst situation for, for that meeting because it's like midnight in London. <laughs> when that happens. No, I'm not coming uh, to that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't, uh, are there other things that folks want to talk about today? Uh, uh, so Yash, is it your first time to attend our Asia Pacific meeting? Um, I mean, uh, Ayush, Ayush, yeah. Ayush, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. I don't know. How yeah. To I don't know. That. Ayush. 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 Yeah. yeah, and nice to meet you. Yeah, look over you. here because your pictures are here. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, so, so are you? Yeah, do you want to introduce yourself, Ayush? Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Why not? Uh, so uh, my name is Ayush Kaushik. Uh, I'm from India and currently in third year undergraduate, pursuing a BTEC in electronics and communication engineering from National Institute of Technology, Hamirpur. Okay. Oh, so nice I want to pursue, yeah, the visual visualizations project from uh, under the GSOC this year. Great. Uh -huh. Well, welcome. So um, I, I noticed that you already start trying out the auger. Yeah, I have <laughs> made some problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're using, are you, you're the student using a Windows machine, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The virtual box. Yeah, that's, that's, that's harder. Um, hopefully we get you through it, but I, I understand the challenges of trying to run the Augur project on Windows. It's not, it requires a lot of uh, backflips. <laughs> and... We did, we did try to document it at one point, but the updates to Windows kept changing the security settings so frequently that keeping the documentation up to date when none of us used Windows was proved, proved more, more labor than we had people to perform it. Um, so you know, I myself uh, you know, created two to three uh, instances of Ubuntu machine on my uh, virtual box. So sometimes, you know, the driver had the problem. Sometimes the yeah. network adapter wasn't able to connect. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, keep asking questions and I'll keep answering them in our Slack channel. And, and you get credit for giving it a try for sure. So welcome, welcome to the community. Yeah, thank is, you. is this the direction of your paper? Sorry, the, the visualizations. Uh, I, th I think it's the direction. I think it means it's the direction of his Google Summer of Code proposal. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. You know, it's throwing a uh, SQL alchemy error, and I searched it, and I got to know that it's a database API errors of some sort, and I wasn't able to, you know, uh, get through it. Uh, um, did go ahead and paste the error that you're getting in Slack, and maybe we can, maybe I'll schedule. I, I'll schedule a tutorial. Um, when does the application period end for Google Summer of Code? It's it like ends April, on right? April, uh, it's April 19th. Okay. From April 4th, we have to, you know, start submitting the proposals. Okay. So I will, I'll, I'll schedule a tutorial for some time um, in the next week. I'm traveling, so I just have to figure out when that would be and I'll publicize it um, and see if we can get you through that particular issue. Cool. Is there any other business that folks want to discuss today? Well, I'm going to give you back 12 minutes of your life then as facilitator of the call, uh, with which you may do whatever you like. I 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate bye bye. appreciate participation and contributions. Talk with everyone soon. Bye. 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 -bye.